Now, let's move on to our big cats. <laughs> Mac OS 10. As you know, our current release is Mac OS 10 Tiger. This has been the most successful release in Apple's history. It's been phenomenal. And I'm very pleased to report that we have 22 million active Mac OS 10 users. Mac OS 10 users, 22 million. And they are comprised of two thirds of them running Tiger. Now this is unprecedented in our industry for two thirds of an installed base to be running the latest and greatest release of an operating system. We have another 23% running Panther, the latest release minus one, and only 10% running an older release than that. So 90% of the customers, or 20 million out of 22 million, are running the current or the current minus one release. Again, unprecedented in our industry. And it really makes it a lot easier to develop software for when you know that. So today, we're going to move beyond Tiger and give you a final look at Leopard before it ships in October. We are really excited about Leopard. We think with Tiger, we're already ahead of the competition. And we think Leopard is just going to set an even higher bar. Our last major release was Tiger on Intel in January 2006. And we're going to ship Leopard in October. That's 21 months after Tiger on Intel. Leopard is the sixth major release of OS X. It's got 300 new features. And this morning, I get to show you 10 of them. So let's get started. Leopard. Feature number one is one we haven't shown before. And that is Leopard has a new desktop. So what's it look like? It looks something like this. This is the new Leopard desktop. And uh, that's Tiger. That's Leopard. Now, we're not having the usual blue pattern, because what we found out is that nobody uses it. Everybody puts their own digital photos on things now. And so we have come up with a desktop that's really more suited to your digital photos. We picked this one. We thought it was nice. But you'll pick your own and throw it up there. And so we've got a menu bar that adapts itself to whatever digital photo you put behind it. We've got a new dock that's more three-dimensional in nature that just, it just swoops out over whatever picture you put there. And so the new desktop has a new menu bar, a new dock, and something new to help us clean up our desktops. All of us have really messy desktops, and we'd like to clean up our desktops, and we're going to give you some tools to help, something called Stacks, which we think will be really nice to clean up our desktops. We've been told that we've got all these different looks throughout the years, uh, white looks, the metal looks. We've got a consistent window look in Leopard. And it's now even easier to see which is the active window. We've made it more prominent. So these are some of the features of the new look of the Leopard desktop. Now let me talk to you about the stacks for a little bit. First of all, let me raise this up in case some of you in the back haven't seen it. That's what the dock is like. And let me focus in on stacks. Stacks are simply folders in the dock that allow you rapid access to their contents. right? And so these are two stacks right here. And you just go click on them, and boom, they show you their contents. And you can get at them instantly. You can view them as a fan here, or you can also view them as a grid, whichever you like. So this is an instant way to get at the contents of folders. You can put in whatever folders you want. Let me uh, zoom in on that a little bit more. And again, you see what it's like. Just click it, and it pops up. You can click any document to run it. Very simple. And let me zoom in even more. Because what we're doing is, in addition to any folders you might put there, we're going to put a folder there called Downloads. Because one of the biggest reasons our desktops are cluttered is because we, we download stuff over the internet through our browsers and through email. And it ends up on our desktop. 
we're redirecting those things to a simple downloads folder and we're putting that downloads folder as a stack in the dock and so when you download something it looks like this until it downloads and it puts it right on the front of the stack so you can get it very easily and do whatever you want to do with it. So this is the new desktop for Leopard. You can put it on the side as well as the bottom. It works great. And what I'd love to do is show it to you. So here we are. You can see the menu up here, right? And uh, you can see the dock. I'm going to grab uh, Safari. And just to show you, again, the dock, you can see the reflections of the icons. You can also see the reflections of various things on it. It's kind of nice. And uh, I'm going to, uh, to go and show you what stacks are like. Now, I've got a few stacks over here. I've got one for some demos I'm going to run a little later on. I've got one for movies and vacation, threw some applications in there and downloads. So let me just go into movies. And again, here's what stacks look like. And uh, if I want to play a movie, I can just go play a movie. It's that simple. So let me go play another one here. Let's see. Uh, yeah, this is a fun one, new iPhone commercial. So, say you're watching Pirates of the Caribbean. Hmm, did somebody say calamari? I assume you've seen that. Uh, and uh, let me go into my vacation stack now. This is a bunch of things that I'm looking at. I've got a bunch of documents together because we're going to go on a vacation and want to plan it out. And, uh, you know, let me look at a few things. I can just go in here and... Just click on something. This is a PDF. It just opens it up. And you know, here I am. Take a look at the top 20 resorts. Uh, let me go back in there. And uh, you know, here's a PDF of a spa that I might want to go see. All right, just go through here and examine that spa. So it's that easy to keep stuff organized. Now, I put, I put my applications folder in here just to kind of show you. You can even use this as an app launcher if you want. I can just zoom in there and launch any app very easily, which is kind of fun. Uh, matter of fact, let me show you this in slow-mo here. This is, you know, again. <laughs> and of course, all these features use core animation, which we'll talk about in a few minutes, to make it very, very easy. Um, and uh, so let me show you the download stack. I'm just going to open Safari here. And uh, I'm going to go to a site, uh, Disneyland Paris because I might want to uh, take my family there on a vacation. And uh, here's a PDF that uh, I'm looking at uh, on my browser for Disneyland Paris, the most fun place in the world, I'm sure. And uh, so I want to download this. That's great. Well, we've added an affordance now in, in Safari, which is just an easy way to download. And you push this thing right here, and it's just going to download it, downloads it into my download stack, and there it is. And so now when I go to my download stack, boom, there is my PDF of... Uh, Disneyland Paris. Right? There it is right there. So that is how it works, and this gives you a feeling for the new desktop in Leopard. New menu bar, new dock, stacks, consistent window look, and very easy to tell the active window. So first thing, new desktop. Second of 10 features we're going to examine today, a new finder. So we've got a new finder in Leopard. It's got a new sidebar. It's really cleaned up, much nicer, much more powerful. With Spotlight, you can search your Mac. Now you can search other Macs and servers with Spotlight right in the finder. You've always been able to share files, but it's never been easy from a user interface point of view. It's now really easy to browse and share files with other computers on a local net, such as all, all the computers at your house, all the computers at your office. And if you are a subscriber to .Mac, we have this really cool feature called Back to My Mac that allows you to share, browse your other computers and share files with them even when they're not on the same local net. You can do it over the internet at vast distances. And we'll show you how that works in just a minute. It's a very cool new feature. And to the new finder in Leopard, we've added something called CoverFlow. 
that hundreds of millions of people already know how to use, and it turns out it's amazingly cool. So, let me just show you a few things in slides here. This is the new finder, and as you know, we've had some buttons up at the top to pick our view. We've added a fourth button for cover flow, and so we can be looking at our, our icons, an icon view here. You can see we've jazzed up some of the PDF ones and things like that. Uh, you can look at things in list view. You can look at things in our famous column view. And now you can look at the same things in cover flow. All your documents. It turns out to be incredibly useful. So that is the new view cover flow. Now let me focus on the sidebar over here. New sidebar for Leopard. It's much cleaner. You can close things when you're not interested in them. And uh, we've got devices, some shared computers, places, and a way to search for things. And let me focus on the search for just a second. We are populating this with some smart searches, but you can add your own. So you can instantly just click on today and see all the documents you touched today, or yesterday, or this past week, or all your images, wherever they are, or all your documents, wherever they are. It's really easy to find stuff. And again, you can add your own smart folders right there. Now let me go ahead and open Shared. And what we'll see is that we've got some computers around our house the home iMac, the kids iMac, a MacBook. And I can, again, browse and share files with these just by clicking on that and going into them as if they were right on my own computer. And if I'm a .Mac subscriber, I can click on that tower in the office and go browse it as well. Now, how does that work? How does this back to my Mac thing actually work? It's, it's really simple, actually, in concept. We've got the internet. We've got .Mac. We've got a computer, let's say an iMac at my house. And let's say I'm traveling and I've got a a MacBook Pro uh, on the road. And I wanna, I've left a file on my home iMac that I need on the road. What am I going to do? Well, whenever my home iMac gets a new IP address, it always tells .Mac. So .Mac always knows the IP addresses of all my computers. And my mobile computer out on the road, whenever I get to my hotel room, plug it in, it goes and tells its IP address to .Mac, and .Mac gives it the IP addresses of all my other computers, and so my Notebook now knows the IP address of my desktop computer. They communicate. It's encrypted. It all works great. So let me show you a few of these things now. So let me first show you CoverFlow. So here's a new finder. As you can see, we've redesigned the folders, made them a little more straightforward, nicer looking, even give you a hint at what's inside them. And, um, I'm going to go click on documents in the sidebar here, and here's all my documents. Again, you can see what they look like. And this is icon view, and there's list view, and there's column view, and here's cover flow view. And I can just scroll through my documents and see all my documents and find exactly what I'm looking for right here. It's really simple, and it's really, really helpful. So the other thing I can do is uh, I can actually cycle through pages. This is a PDF, and I can just cycle through its pages right here. Here's a, here's a keynote presentation, and I can actually cycle through the slides in a keynote presentation. Uh, I've got an ad somewhere here. Yeah, there's the uh, same ad we were looking at earlier. I can play it in place if I want to. And uh, I can even, you know, I can go to any folder and see it uh, this way. I can go to applications, and again, here's my applications. If I want to see them this way, it's pretty cool. Here's my utilities, right? I can just Double click in here, and you know, even our utilities are beautiful. <laughs> you know? Isn't this cool? So this is an amazing way to, uh, to find things, and it turns out to be super useful. So let me go now uh, to the sidebar, and uh, I'm going to, you know, here's devices and places and search for. I can look at all the things that you know, I touched today, you know, all the things I touched yesterday. You know. But uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to open up Shared here. And uh, what it's showing me now are all the computers, let's say, in my house. So the family Mac, uh, you know, Tracy's MacBook, and he, oh, he, here's even a Windows machine up in the attic. And I can, even, <laughs> I can even go on Windows machines and trade files with them this way. I'm going to go on the family, family Mac right here. And uh, I'm connected as a guest. I could, I could log in if I wanted to to get some other files which are not available to any guest. Uh, and I just go in here. And uh, let's say we're looking at uh, buying a new car, and 
And on the family Mac, we've got all these uh, brochures and other things like that. And I can even go into CoverFlow here. And I'm using CoverFlow over the network from this family iMac, uh, looking at, uh, at documents uh, and PDFs and other kinds of documents on this other Mac uh, right from the sidebar. Isn't that cool? So CoverFlow over the network. Now what I'm going to do is I want to show you the back to my Mac stuff. And uh, so I'm going to go up in, in preferences here. And I'm going to choose .Mac right here. And I'm going to, we have a new, uh, a new tab here called Back to My Mac. And all I have to do is push Start. And that's going to say that uh, it wants this Mac to communicate with .Mac and give it its IP addresses and pull the IP addresses of all my other Macs back so it knows how to talk with them. And look what popped up, Mac Pro at work. And uh, it's doing all its IP stuff and uh, will connect me with that computer in just a second. And uh, so I'm going to go in here, Steve, and uh, well, there we go. And uh, I'm going to go in here to presentations. And uh, let's take a look at those. And he, this is the stuff on my work computer right now. And I forgot to bring home a presentation. I could just go in and make sure this is the right one, simple one, right? And uh, I could just drag it over to my desktop, boom, and open it up. And there you have it. Now, I'm going to go up here in the spotlight, and uh, we're also, we've got a, let's say we've got a, a child that's uh, nearing uh, college age, and we're looking at colleges, going to try to get them into school. We've got, again, a bunch of documents there. And I'm going to go search for that on my computer. Uh, college, and I can't find it anywhere. Uh, it must not be on my Mac. It's probably on one of the shared Macs, so I push shared. It's just done a search on all the other shared Macs, and it's found it on the family Mac under school planning, and here are all those documents having to do with college. They're on the other Mac, and uh, I could just uh, you know, open up one just by double-clicking on it and uh, take a look, in this case, at UC Berkeley. Uh, and this is, again, all over the net, uh, spotlight searching other computers, finding me exactly what I want, even if it's not on my own computer. So that gives you a feel uh, for the new finder in Leopard. A much more powerful sidebar, the ability to search other computers with Spotlight, the same as we can search our own. Easily share with other computers, even those that are at far distances if you're a .Mac subscriber, and CoverFlow built right into the Finder. I think you're going to really like it. It's great. So, a new Finder. Number three. We call it Quick Look. Quick Look's great. Quick Look lets you instantly preview files without opening applications. All right, you want to see what's in a file. You don't want to open the application. You just want to check it out. It works with, of course, all the popular file types, text, images, movies, PDFs, Word documents, Excel documents. And if you've got a document type that it doesn't work with, it's a plug-in model, you can easily add it. And you get full screen preview. So you're sitting here in the Finder. You want to make sure that's the PDF that you're looking for. Boom, you can take a look at it. That's it. And let me go ahead and show this to you. So we're going to go back to the Finder. I'm going to go into uh, Documents right here. And uh, I'm going to pick this. I'm, I've got this uh, PDF here right at the beginning. Let, let's use that one, I guess. And all I do is hit the space bar, and boom, there it is. And I am now looking through my PDF. Right? Without launching a viewer app or anything else, boom, boom, boom. Uh, keynote presentation, boom, there it is. And I can just click through the slides, make sure this is what I want, boom, there it goes. And I can even do these things full screen if I want to, which I'll show you in a second. Uh, let's see, there's an Excel document. Yeah, there's, there it is right there. This is an Excel document. Open it up, take a look at it. If it's multi-page, I can take a look at all the pages. I don't know if this one is or not. Nope. But if it was, I could look at all the pages, look at Word documents, anything I want to do. So let's go ahead and uh, I've got a, one of my little trailer for one of my favorite movies right here, Ratatouille. And uh, of course, we could just play it right in here as I showed you. But we can just uh, hit the space bar and get a quick look at it. 
home of the French And I can even make it full screen if I want. Chefs in the world. All my life, I've wanted to be one of them. Isn't this you may great? think that's a strange dream for a rat, but... So, this is how I can rapidly look at files to make sure they're what I want. Say, is this what I wanted? You know? Take a look at it full screen to make sure I've had two or three of the same thing. Yep, that's the one I want. And rapidly examine these things. That is Quick Look. All right. So a great companion to the Finder, to other applications in Leopard. Number four. Leopard is 64-bit, top to bottom. Not only does it have the 64-bit underpinnings in Unix, but we've taken them all the way up through Cocoa. And so Leopard really will be the first time that 64-bit goes mainstream in the PC world. Again, all the way up through Cocoa, and one version of Leopard runs 32-bit and 64-bit apps side by side, optimized for each. We do not have a 32-bit version of Leopard and a separate 64-bit version of Leopard. It's one version. So if you write a 64-bit app, you can be guaranteed it will run on every version of every copy of Leopard out there. And that's why this is going to be the first time that 64-bit goes mainstream. Because you can be guaranteed that 64-bit bit apps run on every copy of Leopard out there. And it's very, very cool. So let me show it to you now. We've got an app that we've written. Uh, it's sort of a little shootout between 32 bits and 64 bits. And so what we have is we've got a 32-bit version and a 64-bit version of the same app. And this app is going to load in a giant photograph. Um, see, we've got our 32-bit app on the left and our 64-bit app on the right. And they're loading in a Library of Congress photograph. Uh, which is four gigabytes in size. It's 32K by 32K pixels, over a billion pixels. And it cannot, the 32-bit app cannot keep this whole thing in memory at once. So it's going to have to be going to the disk to perform operations on it is where the 64-bit uh, version of the app can. And we're going to see the difference. So I've got my photograph here. And let me just zoom in on this just to show you that how dense this photograph is, right? It's a very dense photograph. Uh, very large, a lot of pixels here. So what we're going to do is I've taken this photograph, and it's not quite right. The white balance isn't right. And we can run a few filters on it and clean it up. And so I'm going to go ahead and, and, and do that right now. And uh, you can see the CPU and disk usage here. And uh, you can see how, fast, uh, how much faster the 64-bit version is running. And you can see it's disk usage. It's got the whole image in disk, so it doesn't have to go to the disk, is where the 32-bit version is going to the disk constantly. And so we're done in 28.48 seconds. Uh, let me just go you show you that it actually touched every pixel inside here, cleaned up all the books. Uh, let me do something else that's kind of fun. Uh, while this other one's finishing, I'll just I'll put a stamp on this uh, that uh, says Library of Congress. And again, this is just not a simple piece of text. This goes very deep into the bits. As we zoom in, you'll see that it's uh, all the way in. And uh, we've done all of this uh, in a time that's quite a bit shorter than the other app is going to take to complete here. And it's just one example, a simple app, that shows you the benefits of having 64 bits top to bottom in the system uh, where you can address uh, tons of memory. And uh, there we have it, 81.64 seconds versus uh, 28 seconds on the 64-bit version. All righty. So, and we're, we're seeing a real need for 64-bit, uh, not just in scientific computation. We're hearing it a lot from those guys, of course. But we're hearing it a lot uh, more and more in the professional arts. Uh, whether it's animation or uh, high end of the Photoshop market, uh, we're hearing it quite a bit. So we're hoping that this is going to really help all those people. And please remember that almost every computer we ship is 64-bit capable. 
So this is going to run great on almost every Mac we ship. All right, 64 bits. Number five, core animation. Now, as you know, we've provided you core audio, core image, core video over time. Core animation uh, completes that suite. It's automatic animation. It's very, very simple to use, very easy to add, tremendous high production value to your applications, text, images, video, OpenGL. And again, very high production values, very low effort to add it. You can compose things as scenes of layers, and it automatically brings in the GPU acceleration. It's pretty cool. So let me give you a demo of this. Now, for a demo, uh, our graphics team took a, if you've seen Apple TV, there's a little movie we play at the beginning of it, just to get you in the right mood. And uh, so they took that movie and made it into an interactive uh, application here in a very short period of time. And uh, so here's an application that's just got a bunch of video playing, looks a lot like what we ship with Apple TV, except it's live and interactive. Uh, so I can just go in here and click anywhere, and I zoom into that video and zoom into this and, you know, any video I want to. Right? Uh, but uh, it's, it's even cooler because uh, I can search for things. All these videos have tags on them, so I'm going to search for water. All the, all the videos have anything to do with water. So when I type W, uh, you can see all these videos come out. And, you know. So here's all the videos that have anything to do with water. And, you know, we can see this stuff. It's kind of cool. Uh, and then I could type uh, fish as well. And there's only one that has to do with water and fish. Uh, so that's kind of cool. But again, you can see the, the interactive nature of this app. Uh, let me try Amazon. So there's all the ones that have anything to do with A. So here's all the ones that have to do with the Amazon. And again, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's pretty cool. And this was written very, very quickly. And you can see uh, what core animation can do for you. I think there was one more. had something to do with the beach. And again, we can see all the videos that have anything to do with the beach. All right. So that's what I wanted to show you with core animation. And uh, here we go. I don't know how long our graphics group took to create that, but it wasn't very long. And uh, it shows you what you can do with a little bit of effort with core animation, add tremendous production value and really cool functionality to your apps with core animation. All right, number six, boot camp. Boot camp's pretty amazing. Uh, since we put it out a year ago, March, it's a little over a year ago, we've had over 2.5 million downloads of the beta. And uh, with Leopard, Bootcamp is now going to be built in. No need to go get a download, the latest and greatest version of Bootcamp. It lets you run Windows XP and Vista, native speed, complete compatibility. When you need complete compatibility, this is the best way to run Windows on your Mac. No more CD burning to install the drivers. They're on the Leopard CD. And this is a really great complement to Parallels and VMware. You know, if you want to run Windows now, there's three great ways to run Windows on the Mac. There's Boot Camp, which is the most compatible way. If you need native speed and be totally compatible, Boot Camp's the thing. <laughs> but a lot of people want to run Windows apps side by side with their Mac apps. And for that, Parallels and VMware are fantastic. And so this is Parallels running, as I'm sure many of you know and VMware, same thing. And so we've now got three great solutions if you need to run an occasional Windows app on your Mac. Boot Camp, Parallels, and VMware, we love these other things, and we're helping them as much as we can. So we're thrilled with this, and Boot Camp is now going to be built into Leopard. Number seven, we have something new in Leopard called Spaces. Spaces is pretty cool. Spaces lets you group applications into separate spaces, we call them. And it lets you instantly switch between these spaces, back and forth. 
and it lets you easily move applications between spaces, and it can give you a bird's eye view of those spaces. And so rather than living with this, you can break things up into spaces of apps where you do a specific task, and you need these apps to do it with, put them in a space, and switch to that space. So let me just show you what it's like. All righty, I'm just going to launch uh, Safari and let's say Mail here. And uh, uh, I'm, you know, they're already here, and I'm just going to go into Spaces. And that's one of my four spaces. I can set the number of spaces to however many I want. And uh, so to switch spaces, I just pick another one. And now I'm there. Or now I'm here. Or now I'm there. Right? Very simple. Uh, but there's better ways to switch. There's faster ways to switch. I just hold down one of the keys and hit the arrow key and go down there, go down there. Right? Yeah. Very easy. And I can zoom around uh, all over the place in my spaces and very rapidly switch between them. Boom. Now, if I want to uh, rearrange my spaces, I can do that too. I can say, well, I really want this one down here or maybe up there. Uh, I really want this one up there. Uh, actually, I really want this one, uh, really want this one maybe uh, up here. Whoops, what am I doing here? Nope, I don't want to do that. I just want to do that. And the other thing I can do is I can actually rearrange the applications in my spaces. So as an example, if I'm uh, over here and I want to use uh, iWeb to make a website, I can just drag it up here, and now it's in this space. When I'm done with it, I can drag it back down here, and now it's back in this space. Right? Very, very easy to do. So that is spaces in Leopard. Very simple. Okay. Very easy to use, lets me organize my work life. So number eight, dashboard. Of course, dashboard's been a huge hit. We premiered it in Tiger, we ship a bunch of widgets, but you guys have written a ton of widgets. There are over 3,000 widgets out there now for dashboard, and it's been a huge hit. I don't know about you guys, but I use dashboard many, many, many times every day and it's fantastic. So, you guys keep writing more widgets. Uh, we feel like we should do our part now and then, so we're adding one more widget to Leopard, uh, one that we wanted a lot, called a, just a way to look up movie times, because uh, we like to go see movies now and then. And so this widget allows us to search for movies or by movie or by theater, and uh, when we find the movie we want, it even lets us uh, buy tickets on Fandango, and it's kind of cool. Uh, and it lets us uh, get previews of the movies, a very simple widget, and this will ship with Leopard. So you're making a lot of widgets, we're shipping a few, but customers still want widgets that none of us make. And so we premiered a technology, which we're shipping in Leopard, called WebClip. And WebClip makes you go, it lets you, lets you as a user go make a, a, a widget out of almost anything on the internet, so that you can make your favorite widgets without needing any of us. And it's pretty cool. So let me go demo you these now. Our movies widget, uh, pretty simple. It just shows you uh, posters of all the movies. You click on it, and you can look for movies in here, whatever you'd like. Oh, let's see. And you can pick a theater if you want. You know, what's a theater close to me? I don't know. Pick a time order tickets. Uh, you can even see a trailer here if you want to. Allison, Jack and I need to see you in his office. We were wondering whether or not you would be good for on camera. Really? <laughs> I know, I was so surprised too. All right, well that's cool. Uh, so anyway, this is the movies widget, and uh, I hope you like it. I think it'll be useful. But what's really cool is WebClip. And uh, so let me go into WebClip just by going into Safari. And I'm going to go to a few websites where I want to make some uh, widgets of my own. And this is Yahoo. And I like uh, Yahoo's main story area here. It kind of keeps me plugged into what's going on, like a lavish royal wedding in uh, Brunei. 
So uh, all I do is I go up here and I push this button with the scissors on it. And this is going to automatically find the various sections of a website which I might be interested in. And this is the one I might be interested in. So I'm going to just click on it. And I say, make that a widget. And boom, that's now a widget. Right? And that's cool. All right, let's go back here and let's go to another website. I go to Rotten Tomatoes a lot. Rotten Tomatoes, if you've never been there, is like the best site for movie reviews because they aggregate all the movie reviews around the country. And I go in again to here, and uh, uh, this will help me you know, find things on there. I could pick all these different areas. But I like this one because it shows me the ratings for the movies that are out and the ones that are coming. And so I'm going to click on that and say, OK, I, I want to make that a widget. And uh, there it, it uh, is creating the widget right now. And these things are just going to constantly stay up to date. And here's another widget that I've got. So let's go, get, let's go make another one. Uh, Dilbert. I might like Dilbert a lot. And you can imagine what I might like to do. Just go in here and go down here and pick this and say, let's make a widget. And let me go back. Uh, and uh, I've got a few more here. Oh, Google Trends. You know, these are the keywords that people search on the most at Google. It's kind of cool. And uh, so I could go in here and pick any one of these. Uh, so I'm going to pick this, but I don't want the top 25. I really just want the top 10. So I'll just raise this up to there and say, make a widget out of that. These are the 10 most searched words on Google at any time, and they'll update automatically. And uh, maybe one more. I, I, National Geographic runs a photo of the day. It's usually pretty cool, so I might want to see that. And, you know, I can, again, pick any of these things, but I'm going to pick the photo of the day and make a widget out of that. And so there we are. And uh, now I can go back, and, and uh, I can take my widgets here, and I can flip this around, and I can maybe uh, put a picture frame on this one. And, there's my National Geographic photo, and I can, uh, it's a comic strip, so I'll put a little torn edge on that one. There's my comic strip. Uh, this is, uh, so maybe I'll put um, this on the Google top search words, and uh, maybe I'll put uh, this picture frame here on my box office, and you can just see what you can do here. Um, well, we'll put this on Yahoo there. So here we go. Uh, nah, that gets in the way. Maybe we'll just do something simple. And you know, these are all live. I can go to entertainment here. I can go to sports. I can go pick one of these stories here. Whatever I want to do. And all these widgets are going to update automatically. And this is WebClip. You can make your own widgets from anywhere on the web you want. And they're always going to stay up to date. All righty. So, we're contributing a movie widget, but now we're going to let users make whatever widgets they want from anywhere on the web. And we want you guys to keep making more widgets, too, because your 3,000 widgets are phenomenal. And for those of you who are not using Dash Code, Dash Code ships in every copy of Leopard. And so you can use Dash Code. It's our amazing tool that lets you create widgets in a fraction of the time. And if you're not using it, I'd strongly suggest you do. So three really cool things happening in Leopard about widgets and dashboard. Number nine, iChat. Let's talk about iChat. We have gotten so much feedback about video conferencing. It's incredibly heartening. So many people have used video conferencing to stay in touch with their kids when they go off to college, to tie their families together, uh, some really in some, some heartwarming ways. And we've also shipped, as you know, uh, now that we have video cameras in most of our Macs, we've shipped an app called Photo Booth, uh, which seems to vie with MySpace for uh, an app that kids want to spend hours and hours and hours on. And so we're going to bring some of that fun over to iChat as well. First of all, we've got better audio quality uh, with a new AAC codec called Low Delay. Uh, tab Chats, which has been a big request. Photo Booth effects now in iChat iChat Theater, which we think will be very, very cool, and uh, as well as backdrops. So you're all familiar with, of course, what it means to have tab chats. It really cleans up your desktop when you're on multiple chats. You can imagine what photo booth effects are going to look like. Uh, iChat Theater, instead of having a multi-party conference, it lets you actually take applications like iPhoto and others and put them right on the screen. You can even expand it to full screen to show off your latest photos or even keynote slideshows. And so let me give you a feel for what this is like for iChat. So what I'm going to do is just uh, launch iChat here. Yeah, I don't have a lot of buddies. Just Phil. 
And uh, so I'm going to see if he wants to, uh, to video chat with me here. Hi, Phil. Hey, Steve. How you doing? I'm doing pretty good. How's the keynote going? Uh, I'll tell you in half an hour or so. <laughs> uh, but why don't, why don't, can you help me show everybody what, uh, what iChat's like in Leopard? Oh, there's a lot of great features, sure. Well, let me start with, uh, with iChat Theater. We're in the middle of an iChat right now, and while we're having this iChat, I can show you all different kinds of things. So, for example, maybe I have a slideshow I created of a, of a recent vacation. So I go to iPhoto, and I hit play, and it starts playing right in iChat. So I can show you my photos. Very cool. I'm going to go into full screen here so we can just see in full screen. Look at that. So that's cool. You're seeing the same photos I am across the internet in iChat. And that works with iPhoto. I can do the same kind of thing with a presentation. Maybe I want to show you a keynote presentation. I go into keynote and I choose to view it in iChat theater. And now you're seeing the same presentation as me. As I click on the slides, you're going to see the transitions and effects, just like you're right here with me watching a keynote presentation. Very cool. Those are pictures and slides. I can do the same thing with video. So I'm going to grab a home movie. Maybe I recently created a movie and I want to show you. So I drag it right in to our iChat session, and it starts playing. So that's cool. Now we Very do cool. that using that amazing Quick Look technology. So really, anything that works with Quick Look can work inside iChat Theater. So for example, I can go and Quick Look on my machine, a PDF document, and there's a button to send it right to you in iChat Theater. And now we're looking at a PDF together. Wow. And it works with all the Quick Look types of documents that have plugins. Yeah, is that cool? So for example, where I can go and grab an Excel spreadsheet, and I can start showing you an Excel, a, a whole workbook. There's actually pages in the workbook I can flip through. And it doesn't matter what kind of content it is. If Quick Look supports it, we can do it in iChat Theater. Wow. So that's iChat Theater. That's very cool. So tell me about these backdrops. Oh, backdrops are a lot of fun. <laughs> so all I have to do is go into my effects window in iChat and select a backdrop. And iChat will ask me to step out of the frame so it finds the background. And once it's found it, I can step back. And now I'm in that background. Wow. That is so cool. And now, now that I've done that, I can select all different kinds of backgrounds. And they'll just pop right in place. Very so cool. that's backgrounds. So tell me about some of the other photo booth effects we can do. Can you give me? OK. Well, we've taken effects just like with Photo Booth, for here's one called Thermal that we had in Photo Booth. So a lot of the, a lot of the effects, hold on. A lot of the effects that are in, in Photo Booth we can do now in iChat. And they're more fun when you do them live with your friends. All different kinds of cool things, you know. So, <laughs> this is the tricky part. <laughs> this is a really fun one. It's like in Star Wars doing a hologram. So and those are cool, but I've saved the best for last. This one's a lot of fun. <laughs> so, this is taking a photo with an alpha channel mask for the mouth. <laughs> and it finds my mouth in the camera and places it in the center. And if I'm actually a little slow, it'll actually do some color balancing as well and try to get me to look just like our first president, George Washington. Now, this is cool. You can imagine all the kinds of people you can have a lot of fun with. So. Yeah. I love my math. <laughs> Yeah. So, uh, I will push it. <laughs> I can have a lot of fun with this. <laughs> Thank you, Phil. You're welcome. See you. Bye, -bye. Bye everyone.
We figured that was the only way we were ever going to get Steve to join us in one of our keynotes. So, <laughs> so the new iChat and Leopard, it's pretty cool. And we think that it's very useful with things like iChat Theater and a whole lot of fun with things like backgrounds and some of the stuff you saw. So that's iChat. And number 10 is, of course, Time Machine. And as we talked about before, you know, we're using our computers not just to store our work documents, but really our digital lives. We've got things on our computers now that used to be in our precious shoe boxes, would never get lost. But if you lose these things now, if you just lose one precious photograph, you're going to be really bummed. Imagine if you lost your whole library of photographs. We've got very precious stuff on our computers, and yet almost no one backs up their computer automatically. Almost all of us do not. And so we are just walking time bombs waiting to happen in terms of having something go wrong and misplacing some information, mistakenly deleting it, or worse. And this is what Time Machine is all about. We would like to solve these problems in such a simple way that everyone actually uses it. So Time Machine lets you set up backup with just one click. You click it on, it does everything, it automatically backs up everything. You don't have to tell it what you want backed up or not, it just backs up everything. And it'll back it up to a local hard drive or a network server, and it'll even back it up wirelessly. And so you can hang a hard drive off of your Mac if you want to, or you can go get an Airport Extreme base station and plug a drive into it and do it wirelessly. And as a matter of fact, all the Macs in your house can share one base station in a drive, if you get a bigger drive, to back up all the Macs in your house wirelessly on one drive, all completely automatically. So that handles the backup. What happens if something goes wrong and you need to go find a file? Well, Time Machine now lets you search back in time for lost files using Spotlight Search. Back in time. And you can preview files you find to make sure they're the right ones with Quick Look. And if they are, you can restore them with one click, and you can even restore your entire Mac. And we've got this great user interface that lets you go back in time and find things now, even with Quick Look. And so let me show that to you. So I'm going to, uh, again, open my Finder. And I'm going to search for uh, a really important presentation uh, that I was making on architecture. And, oh my god, it's not there. This should have been there. And so I'm freaking out right now. Where did it go? <laughs> and so I'm going to activate Time Machine just by clicking on this icon. And there it is. And what I can do, it's still, you see it still has architecture in the search field. And matter of fact, it has architecture in every search field back through time. And to go back and search through time, all I have to do is push this arrow. And it's now searching through time until Spotlight finds stuff having to do with architecture. And there it is. And so I can now, this is the presentation I think I was looking for. And here's all my support materials. So I obviously must have thrown out a folder mistakenly. And I can make sure of that. I can just go ahead and quick look this thing. And sure enough, this is exactly what I was looking for. There it is, safe and sound. Whew. And so now I want to restore this. And so all I do is push this button that says Restore. And boom, I have now restored my presentation. And I can open it in Keynote, in this case. Boom, there it is. I found my presentation. I've saved the day with Time Machine. All right. So the goal here is to build this in and make it so simple and so automatic that people actually use it. One click setup, just hang an inexpensive drive, USB Firewire on your Mac, or get an Airport Extreme base station, wirelessly back up all the Macs in your house, and if you lose something, it's really easy to search back in time and find it, preview it with Quick Look, and then restore it with just one click. We think this is really important, 
And that's why we're building it into Leopard, and that is Time Machine. Okay. So this is 10 things out of Leopard that we want to give you a little look at today. A new finder, quick look, 64-bit top to bottom, core animation, boot camp built in, spaces, dashboard, extended iChat, and now Time Machine, and all of this with a whole new desktop. These are just 10 of the over 300 features in Leopard. And we think you're really going to love it. So, Mac OS X Leopard. You're getting a copy today. <laughs> Leopard development preview. After the keynote today, just walk downstairs to the registration desk and pick up your copy this morning. We want to get it in your hands have you start testing it, giving us lots of feedback, because we intend to ship this in October. Now, we've got a basic version, which is going to cost $129. We've got a premium version, which is going to cost $129. We have a business version, which is going to cost $129. We have an enterprise version. It's going to cost $129. And, and we have the ultimate version. We're throwing everything into it. It's $129. So we think most people will buy the ultimate version. Seriously, we have just one version of Leopard. It's got everything in it, and it cost $129. And we just couldn't be happier. So, Mac OS X Leopard. And we hope you love it as much as we do. So, there you have it.